Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will continue um, solving quadratic equations uh, without using the formula, trying to simplify it to, to use the full squares and something like this. Um, the only difference is uh, we will do it this time in the domain of complex numbers. So uh, I have three problems here, uh, three equations, and uh, uh, two of them we will have um, with uh, real solutions, and the third one will uh, will have a, a true complex solutions. All right. So without much ado, let's just solve one after another. So the first one is uh, this. Okay. Now, if you would like to solve quadratic equation without using the formula, the first thing which is usually recommended is get rid of this coefficient with x squared. So you will have just plain x squared with the coefficient 1. So you divide everything by 9. So you will have x squared plus 12 over 9. You can actually reduce it by 3. It will be 4, th 4 over 3. x minus 4. 4 over 3 equals to 0, right? So I divide by 9 everything, which is invariant transformation, and reduce in both cases by 3. Okay, now this piece is supposed to be part of x plus a squared. Now, in this case, this is x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So 2ax must be 4 third x, which means that a is equal to, if 2a is equal to 4 third, then a is equal to 2 third. So I will do this. That gives me x squared plus 4 third x, but it gives me something extra, which is the square of the last number, a squared, which is 4 ninths. So I will subtract 4, 9. And now that's an invariant transformation of this piece into this. And now I still have minus 4 thirds. Now it's equal to 0. OK. Now, is it easier? Of course it is easier, because I have only once um, unknown x. Here I have it in two places, and they don't know what to do with this. In this case, it's very easy. Just invariantly transform uh, x with whatever uh, expression to the left and everything else uh, free member to the right, and you will have x plus 2 over 3 squared is equal to um, 4, 9 plus 4, 3. Okay. Now, what is this? Well, instead of 4, 3, you can put uh, multiply by 3 both sides, it will be 12 over 3, uh, 12 over 9, sorry. So 9 is common denominator. 12 over 9 plus 4 over 9, that's 16 over 9. So let me just put 16 ninths. Now, non invariant but very carefully performed transformation is we can make a square root from, we can uh, 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 apply the square root to both sides of the equation. Now, it's not invariant, you know about that, so the correct way is to use the absolute value. To have only the positive part. So the positive part is this, and the positive part of this is 4 thirds. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of 9 is 3, so that's 4 thirds. So this is the correct uh, their uh, der derivation from this. Only the positive sides. Now, from which we have, obviously, two solutions. x plus 2 over 3 is equal to 4 over 3, and x plus 2 over 3 is equal to minus 4, 3. Now, in both cases, the absolute value of x plus 2 third will be 4 third. Right? So this is the positive part, and this is the negative part. If you have minus here, it's equal to 4 thirds. I just transferred minus 
to the right side, multiply both, both, both sides equations by, by minus 1, and so I've got this. From which we have two roots, two solutions. <coughs> OK. What are these two solutions? One is, if you subtract 2 thirds from both sides, it will be x equals to 2 thirds. And in this case, it will be minus 2 thirds, minus 4 thirds, that's minus 6 thirds, which is minus 2. And x is equal to minus 2. Let me make a very small observation here. Let's go back to the original equation uh, and uh, reduce it by 9, so it will be x squared plus, uh, what was it, 4 thirds, x minus 4 thirds. This was an equation with 1 as a coefficient uh, with x squared. Now, here's an interesting thing. Multiply these two things, these two equations, uh, uh, these two solutions. 2 thirds times minus 2, it will be minus 4 thirds. You see? Minus 4 thirds. And these two solutions. Minus 2, uh, two thirds minus 2 is equal to 2 third minus 6 third is equal to 4 third. Now this is 4 th minus 4 third. So this coefficient is the same as this one, except that the sign is opposite. So let me just repeat it. The product of two solutions is equal to the free member of this equation, and the sum of two solutions is equal to the coefficient with x with an opposite sign. Just make an observation, because we will have exactly the same situation in other cases as well. All right. So that's the two solutions. Oh, we wanted to make a check, right? What was it? Minus 2 and, uh, and 2 thirds, right? Minus 2 squared is 4 uh, times 9, 36. 36, uh, 12 times minus 2 is minus 24. 36 minus 24 minus 12. That's 0. Good. And 2 thirds uh, square will be 4 ninths times 9 is 4. Uh, 2 thirds times 12 will be 12 and 3. That would be 4 times 2. It's 8. And minus 12 also 0. Everything is fine. Solution is correct. Let's move on. Next equation, 25x squared plus 70x plus 49 equals to 0. I hope big numbers don't scare you. OK. Uh, again, as usually, we reduce by 25 to get 1 uh, as a coefficient with x. So we will have x squared plus 70 25 can be reduced by 5. Uh, 70 is 5 times 14. So it will be 14 over 25 reduced by 5 will be 5. X plus 49, 25. All right. As usually, remember, this coefficient is double what we have to put here. So half of it will be 7 fifths squared. So that would give me 
that would give me x plus 2 times x times 7, so it's 14 over 5 x, plus uh, square of the free member here, which is 49 25 So I have to subtract 49 25 to make it um, invariant. And I still have my plus 49 25 Now, what's interesting about this equation? Well, obviously, that's what's interesting. And we don't have anything um, on the right side of the equation. We have x plus 7 fifths squared equals to 0. Um, and here, we have only one solution, obviously, because if you um, uh, extract the square root from both sides, you will have 0 on the right. So x plus 7, 5 absolute value is equal to 0. But if it's equal to 0, it doesn't really matter whether it's an absolute value or not absolute value. You can, it's still 0. Plus 0 or minus 0, it's still the same 0. So that's the solution. x equals to minus 7 fifths. Now, is it only one solution? Well, as I told you before, it's actually supposed to be considered as a double solution. Um, it just two different solutions coincide with each other. It's a very convenient formulation in this particular case. Now, let me um, return back to um, that little observation which I made in the first place, that the product of two solutions is supposed to be the free member of the equation if the coefficient is 1 here. Well, product of two solutions, one solution is minus 7 fifths, another solution is also minus 7 fifths. So their product is 7 fifths times 7 fifths minus, uh, minus times minus, so it's 49 20 fifths, which is exactly this. And the sum of these two solutions should be equal to the second coefficient with, a, with an opposite sign. Well, minus 7 fifths and minus 7 fifths again because it's a double solution. As you see, that's why it's very, that's why it's very convenient to consider it as a double solution. So minus 7 fifths and minus 7 fifths is minus 14 fifths, which is opposite, with an opposite sign, um, that corresponds to the second coefficient. All right? So everything checks. Great. Let's move on. We have equation number three, where, um, as I promised, the solutions will be um, non-real. They will be true complex numbers with this square root of minus y, m minus 1, which is i. All right, so what's the equation? The equation is 16x squared plus 24x plus 57 equals to 0. Okay? Um, first step, as usually, we reduce by 16 just to get rid of the uh, coefficient with x squared. That's much easier. And here we have x, uh, we have 24 sixteenths, which is reducible by 8, so it's 3 over 2x plus 57 sixteen is equal to 0. Now, next thing is to make it a full square of something, x squared plus 3 to 3 second x, it will be x plus half of this coefficient, which is 3 over 4 squared. Now we satisfied x squared plus 3, 4 times x and times 2, which is 3 uh, over 2x. That's satisfied as well. Now, but this also has the square of this number, which is supposed to be subtracted to make it invariant. So now we have transformed this piece into this piece. And we still have 57 sixteenths. All right. x plus 3, 4 square equals 2. Okay, 57, and this is minus 9, so it's 48. But it goes to the right. Now, 48 divided by 16, by the way, it's 3. So on the right, I will have minus 3. Now, you remember that square root of minus 1 is, in the complex numbers, is i. So, when we will use the square root from both sides, what we have to do is obviously the same thing. x plus 
three fourths. X plus three fourths is equal to. Um, sorry. Square root of three i, right? If I'm using the square root of minus three, square root of three is square root of three, and minus one will be i. So that's in the area of complex numbers represents this particular solution. And in the area of complex numbers, since we are dealing with, we, we, we are just using the square root from both sides, we obviously have to use the second one, minus square root of 3i. Because in both cases, when you square this, plus uh, uh, square root of 3i uh, uh, squared will be minus 3, and minus uh, square root of 3i squared will be minus 3. In both cases, they represent both solutions. And that's what actually gives us the final complex solutions of this equation. So let's write it down here. Let me do it this way, that will be simpler. I'll put x is equal to minus 3, 4. plus or minus. So I transported 3 fourths to the right side of the equation by subtracting from both sides. OK, that's two solutions. Now, before I move any further, let's again check if that little observation which we made before holds in the area of complex numbers, that the product of these two uh, solutions is the free member of this equation and the sum of these two solutions is the, the second coefficient with a, with a minus sign. OK, now, the product. So we have to multiply them. Now, you remember that uh, you multiply i by i, it will be uh, square root, it will be minus 1. i squared is minus 1, right? i squared is minus 1, minus 1. Now, keeping that in mind, let's multiply these solutions. This times this will give you 9 sixteenths. This times this will give you uh, 3 fourths and uh, square root of 3. It will be plus 3 fourths square root of 3i. Now, this times this. <clears throat> it's minus 3 fourths square root of 3. I. And then this times this, first of all, there is a minus here. But then there is the i squared, which is minus 1. So it will be plus. And square root times square root, it will be just plain 3. And as you see, i goes out, as it should actually, and we have 916 plus 3. Well, you can always write, instead of 3, 48 sixteenths, 916 plus 48 sixteenths, that's 57 sixteenths. So we have that. So multiplication is fine. So product of these two solutions is exactly the free member. Now sum, again, i is uh, uh, completely reduced, so you have minus 3, 4 and minus 3, 4, so it's double 3, 4, so it will be 3 seconds, but it's minus, and this is plus, so I told you from the beginning that this is supposed to be with a, with a negative sign, with an opposite sign, so that holds as well. So, is, as you see, in this particular case, we have two solutions in the area of complex numbers, it's a true complex numbers, but still this little observation which we made before, that the product is equal to the free member and the sum is equal to the second coefficient with a minus sign, this still holds. Um, well, basically, um, I can very easily 
um, uh, prove that uh, that's supposed to be the case always. And here is why. Let's consider our equation has two solutions. Now, if x is equal to a and x is equal to b are two solutions of the equation x squared plus uh, what letters should we use? Let's say px plus q is equal to 0. So if these are two solutions of this equation, it means that that this uh, polynom, this quadratic polynom, is equal to the product of these two um, linear um, ex expressions. Only this will give you um, x equals a as a solution to equation when the whole thing is equal to 0, or x is equal to b will give you this. So if the product is equal to 0, it means one of these is equal to 0, or vice versa. But now let's open the parentheses here, and what do we see? This is equal to x squared minus ax minus bx plus ab. Or x squared minus a plus bx plus ab. As you see, the product of these two is equal to the free member, q. So q is equal to ab. And some of these two solutions gives you the second coefficient, but with an opposite sign. So p is equal to minus a plus b. Well, what it means, it means that sometimes you can even guess uh, solutions to a quadratic equation if the equation is really like simple enough. Just as an example, let me just make an example of this. Now, I'm talking only about equations with one uh, as a coefficient with x squared. So let's just make a very simple um, equation. Now, if I, as a, as a teacher, I want to come up with an equation which has simple solutions. Let's say I want to have solutions x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 2. How can I come up with an equation which has these roots? Well, very simply, it's x squared. Then the sum of these two solutions, it's minus 1 and 2, it's uh, 1. So I have, uh, with an opposite sign, x, and the product is minus 2. OK, this is the equation. And I claim that this equation has these roots. Well, let's try it. 2 squared. It's 4 minus 2 minus 2 is 0. Correct. Minus 1. Square 1. Minus 1 and minus, it will be plus 1. So 1 plus 1 minus 2, 0 again. So you see, just using the property that the sum of these is supposed to be, supposed to be equal to this coefficient with, a, with an opposite sign. Minus 1 plus 2, it's 1. Opposite sign is minus 1. And the product is supposed to be the free member, the third coefficient. Here you go. But sometimes, if you just look at this equation, you might consider, OK, somebody gave you this equation just maybe to, to check your skills or whatever, and it's supposed to be a simple equation. Solutions supposed to be some small number. So if the product of these two uh, solutions is supposed to be minus 2, then what choice do you have? You have plus minus 2 plus minus 1. You can just check one of these solutions, and you will get exactly what you need. And if you get one of them, immediately you get another. So that's basically one of the uh, interesting uh, applications of this particular um, uh, property of the solutions um, of this quadratic equation with the coefficient 1 with x squared. Well, that would be it for today. Um, we will probably have, have some more problems, um, less trivial ones. And, uh, well, good luck and thanks for listening to me. Uh, don't forget to check unisor.com where you will have much more um, lecturing material and uh, lots of other things. Thank you very much.